What's going on everybody? Welcome to Nerdgasm. Today we are going to be going over Legion episode 6. Now, just as a warning, spoiler alert, there's this like all over the place guys. There's stuff that you just need to know. So if you haven't watched the episode, go watch it please. It was so good. It was a little bit of a bottleneck episode, but it was such an important, amazing bottleneck episode. So the first thing I want to point out is that nothing in this episode is real. Everything in this episode is like in this little prison on the astral plane that was created through David's powers. Now I said through David's powers, I didn't say by David. So just keep that in mind. Something that was great in the beginning of the episode, we see everyone going in to see, you know, Dr. Lenny, and she's basically using parts of their powers and their fears as a reason for them to be trapped in this fake mental hospital. But the best part is, is that we get a little bit more background on the eye. We all know that the eye doesn't really talk much and he's really creepy. And we find out that he had like this little bit of a complex when he was growing up because his voice didn't deepen until he was a little bit earlier and he didn't get body hair, blah, blah, blah. So he's kind of developed this detachment to people and it kind of led him to want power. And later on in the episode, very like basically the end of the episode, Lenny says to David that power is the only thing that matters in life and that the eye basically gets it. And we see the eye starts actually hunting down Carrie in the episode. I just love this little bit of character development that we got on a character that we didn't really know anything about. He's crazy, he's fucked up in the head, but everything stems from this childhood thing and he's convinced himself that he's a man and he can do whatever. But in reality, the reason he kills and he wants power and all that stuff is because he's not okay. Speaking of character development, something that I loved seeing and some people speculated it from last episode, I know that I said it from last episode when we went over the promo for this episode, Sid is kind of immune to what's going on right now. Sid can see things and she feels things and she knows something's wrong. She keeps seeing that door. She sees that weird bloody hole in the wall. She knows that things aren't the way they're supposed to be. And this scares Lenny. Lenny is thinking that this girl knows too much. For some reason, it's not trapping her like it's trapping everybody else. I mean, it's even trapped David. And Sid is figuring out what's happening. So it's great to see that Sid has immunity. You know, she had sex with David. She's in a relationship with David. She switched bodies with David. That's possibly why she has this weird immunity to what's going on right now. Another theory that fans have had is that she might be a personality. This There's like this whole thing going on. If you know Legion, you know he has fractured personalities and you know that every personality has a power. Then you might also know that people are thinking that Sid is a personality, Patonomy is a personality, everybody is a personality and they're all David's powers. And the only person who's not a personality is Lenny because Lenny is the Shadow King. And this episode pretty much confirmed why Lenny is the Shadow King, and I'll get to that. But whether or not Sid is a personality or Sid just has immunity because, you know, switching bodies, having sex, spending all that time together, emotional connection, all that stuff, she's definitely gonna be a reason why the Shadow King is gonna be defeated. She's definitely gonna help, she's gonna have a little bit of an edge, and she's gonna have an important role in the next episode when she has to save David. Something really important, if you've been keeping up with all the episodes, episodes one through six, we know that David says that he used to have a dog named King, and people took that as to think that King, Shadow King, Marvel, uh, Parasite, it's, it's the Shadow King. So you should remember that David had the dog, he had the dog King, and he loved the dog, he had memories of the dog, clearly fake memories, because we find out in the last episode that his memories have been altered, everyone's memories have probably at one point been altered, and the dog was never real. So we see David tell Patonomy that David doesn't even like dogs. Patonomy says, who doesn't like dogs? And David says, I definitely don't like dogs. Dogs are not my thing. So that was great because it's like, we know that everything could be fake, nothing could be real. People are personalities, people are, aren't personalities, but this could be David's, like the show itself could be taking place in David's said, I mean, the whole thing is a mind twist of just things that we don't know. And now we find out that David didn't even like dogs, which means that the Shadow King manipulated David into thinking he liked dogs. And now that he's in this world where he says himself, he feels like he has a balance and he feels like himself. This is probably the clearest we've ever gotten of actual David. So I can say with confidence that the real David does not like dogs. Now I saw some people were wondering what happened to the guy with the telekinetic powers. You know, the guy from the first episode who was flinging people and the guy from the last episode who split into the teams with them. And if you remember in the last episode, the eye did something to him and then assumed his appearance. And when you see him in the mental hospital, you see that he's in a wheelchair and he's just drooling. Like he's like, nobody's home. You just, you know, you just snap your fingers. Nobody's home. He's just out of it. Personally, what I think it is, is that the eye knocked him unconscious and he's somewhere in the house. And when the Shadow King sucked everyone into 
this little fake hospital realm. Obviously he got pulled in two, but he's not even conscious. So why would he be conscious in this hospital world? Hopefully he's not dead. If he is dead, it's just like the last few brain waves that are still active when someone dies, got sucked in and he's just momentarily alive before they get back to the real world and then he dies, which would be really sad because I don't want to see him go. I like the guy. Let's talk about that amazing moment when Lenny does this crazy number. She does this amazing, crazy, I'm in control dance to a song by Nina Simone. And if you guys are wondering, the song is called Good Feeling. I don't know if that, that kind of looked like it was a remix. So if you're gonna have to look for Nina Simone Good Feeling remix. But the dance number was beautiful. We see Lenny going through the memories that she's altered through David's life. We find out that all of that is behind the door that Sid keeps seeing. So now we have a great idea of what's behind the door. It's, you know, all of David's memories, the memories that the Shadow King has manipulated, stuff like that. And it was just beautifully done. I don't know if you guys know this, but in an interview, Aubrey Plaza said that that dance number wasn't choreographed. That was just Aubrey Plaza being Aubrey Plaza. They gave her free reign and then she just killed it. She did just a beautiful job. I I, I was scare aroused. I don't know if anybody, you know, but, but it was great. She did an amazing job. Aubrey Plaza has been killing it as the weird version of the Shadow King that everybody gets to see. And I love it. I freaking love it. Next, if you guys remember from episode one, where Sid goes into David's room and then she's like, hey, move over. And she puts that little barrier between them. We just get a little repeat of that exact same moment. It's kind of like deja vu. And it was David that came in this time and he tells her to move over. They sleep in the bed together. It was beautiful. It was nice. It was just a little small thing. De again, deja vu thing from the first episode. And their roles are reversed. Because remember, David was the crazed one who had no idea what was going on, what was real. And Sid was the one that was more confident and she had an idea of what was going on. She knew about her powers. But this time it's the other way around. Sid is the one that's crazed and she has no idea what's real, what's not real. And David is the one that's like, I feel like I have a balance in my life and I'm okay and everything's beautiful rainbows. So it was a great little switch up between the two. Speaking of what's real and not real, Carrie has a dream. Actually, both of the Carries have a dream. And we find out that the male Carrie is dreaming about a giant ice cube. And we all know what the giant ice cube is. That is where Oliver Bird is trapped because he's trapped on the astral plane and he's trapped inside that ice cube basically when he's not inside of his weird scuba diver suit. And the other Carrie has the dream of a man in a scuba diver suit. I don't know why he's contacting them, why he's going towards them, but somehow they're remembering, they're seeing that Oliver Bird is there. And Oliver Bird is like the best bro in the world, all right? Oliver, bro, Oliver Bird is a bro's bro, all right? He comes back for the Carries, he comes back for his wife, and he pulls his wife out of the fantasy into what seems like now she's in the reality. Or at least she has an image shot of what's happening in reality. And she sees the bullets, she sees everybody's about to die, she tries to touch the bullets. This was a beautiful effect. The bullets were hot. The bullets were hot. And then she tries to push David and Sid out of the way, but she can't. It's like, ah, they're too heavy. It was like trying to move just a rock that was planted in the ground. She couldn't move it. I don't know if she is going to do something about that. I don't know if you guys remember the bleeding wall. If maybe Sid got shot, that's why she could see it. I don't know if Dr. Bird is going to throw herself in front of the bullet. And that's why it was there. That's why the wall was bleeding. Somebody, it, it seems like somebody's gonna get shot though. And right before that scene ends with her trying to touch the bullets and touch Sid and David, we see the Shadow King, his eyes pop up on the wall and the Shadow King knows what's happening, which is great because the Shadow King has control of all of David's powers. What the Shadow King can see isn't limited to what we see. So it's everywhere all over the place, especially in a world trap prison that it created. And just real quick, before I talk about the last thing that was amazing in this episode, I is hunting the female Carrie. The male Carrie got out. So male Carrie rescues Sid and female Carrie is being hunted by the eye. And isn't it kind of like a beautiful, just flip flop for the two of them? The male Carrie is out and he's being heroic and he's saving and he's rescuing Sid. And then the female Carrie is being hunted and she's vulnerable. And she, I, I just, I don't think that they did it on purpose. It's very possible they did, but I love the contrast of both of their positions in the show right now. Now for the main reason you guys are here, the Shadow King confirmation. Listen, I myself will not be 100% convinced until they say the name Shadow King. But as of right now, Lenny talks to David when David goes to look for Sid and talks about parasites and funguses that infect ants and then they grow they grow up and they plant themselves in the brain of the ant and i'm just thinking parasite that, that sounds like shadow king and then the shadow king's talking about i knew your father your father tried to stop me your father tried to hide you from me professor xavier knew the shadow king professor xavier met the shadow king and professor xavier dominated the shadow king i mean just freaking wrecked the Shadow King, because he is an amazing telepath. The Shadow King knows who David's father is. So that's again, confirming that the Shadow King 
is the Shadow King because of his previous encounter with Professor Xavier because we know Xavier is David's father. And then another confirmation that it's the Shadow King. The Shadow King tells David that I've been with you since the womb and my plan was just to poison you and then move on. And that's what the Shadow King does. The Shadow King needs a host, but the host always burns out. The host always dies because the Shadow King is too powerful. But the Shadow King never realized how powerful David was going to end up being. So it decided to stay in David and use his body. And it, and, it, and it tells David, I only need your body. I don't need your mind. I could give a rat's ass about what happens to your mind. Because David is an Omega level mutant, David can sustain the Shadow King pretty much indefinitely. And these are the things that just confirm the Shadow King. The thing with the fungus, the thing with knowing his father, Charles Xavier, the thing with burning through bodies but ending up staying in david it's kind of like the mirror island saga if you guys have ever read that if this is the shadow king it's beautiful what they're doing so much focus on the astral plane with these last few episodes and the astral plane is the only place you can kill the shadow king you can't kill him physically because he has no physical form you have to kill him on the astral plane so this would make a lot of sense it's the shadow king i would i'm like 99.8 percent positive i just i can't say 100 until i hear the name but come on guys you know that we can figure this out, right? I forgot to mention to you guys, thank you for sticking through this video for so long. If you have, you're awesome. Season two has been confirmed. Season two. Legion, Legion is getting a season two. Everybody in the world just what what? It's getting a season two, guys. And on that note of an awesome Legion season two, let's check out the promo. The hospital wasn't real. It was a mental projection created by the monster. I've been paying attention. Look around, pal. We're in a locked coffin on the ground. I'm coming for you, baby. We'd better rescue them. Facing certain death and all that. We have to rescue them. Didn't I just say that? I'm sure I said that. All right, guys, so we know that David is trapped inside the box because the Shadow King said he doesn't care about what happens to his mind. And clearly this episode is going to be some form of rescue mission, obviously for everyone, but also for David. We see that Carrie was able to make it out with the help of Oliver and Oliver is going to have way more of a prominent role in this episode, even though in the episode that we just saw, it he was kicking butt. From the promo, we can tell that we're going to have to deal with the fact that the eye is hunting Carrie. Stuff's probably falling apart because David's trapped and the Shadow King doesn't care about what's happening to everyone else. Sid already knows everything that's going on. You know, she's been paying attention. She gets what's going on. Parasite, weird dream. David's an Omega level mutant. We have to save him, da da da. She knows what's going on. She gets it. What I'm excited for is the fact that we see this scene right here with Lenny just snapped. Her appearance is crazy. Everything behind her is jacked. So, oh, we're going to see a crazed Aubrey Plaza running through here, probably messing with everybody. So they're probably going to be hunted by Aubrey. They're probably going to be hunted by the angriest boy in the world. The dog might show up and then just turn into something else and just wreck them. So that's going to be, I just, I hope they do the whole chain shifting thing. That would be really great. But I think from this scene here, this is going to be the last time that we're going to have to see them on the astral plane um, or maybe just right here in the astral plane. Because I think they're going to conclude this scene with them almost getting shot. We're going to find out who gets shot. And then it might lead to, you know, the conclusion. What we can confirm, the episode, it's an entire astral plane rescue mission. And everybody's going to have their own little story going on. I, I don't know what's going to happen to Patonomy. I don't know what's going to happen to the guy who's drooling, who's most likely unconscious. Hopefully not dead in the real world. But again, we do get the greatness of knowing that Carrie's going to help out. The other Carrie's going to be getting hunted. David's going to be getting rescued. Sid is going to have more of a confident, prominent role in, you know, being able to stand up for herself and stand up for her man and all that other stuff going on. And Oliver Bird is going to kick ass. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for kicking ass and helping this channel grow to just unbelievable heights that I didn't think was going to happen. Let me know any theories that you guys have. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode that we just watched. Oh my God, it was so good. I had to watch it three times. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.